All right, FAQ number 83, is God the universe? No. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of verses here where people could try to twist it and teach this. Um, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 23. Now, they would want to leave off the first part because it kind of identifies things, but it says, The fullness of him that filleth all in all. So, God fills all in all. He is everything. He is the universe. Okay, that's what you call pantheism. That God is the earth, God is the water, God is the air, God is the birds, God is everybody, you know, pantheism. God is everything. God is the universe. Uh, no, that doesn't work. God is a, a being that is separate from his creation. All right, and he requires that his creation be subservient to him. The Bible says that every knee shall bow, and they all will. Uh, if they don't want to bow in this life, they will in the next one. Okay? And, uh, and I don't mean reincarnation either. I mean before they're cast in the lake of fire for eternity. But let's look at the context. Jump up to verse 20 in Ephesians chapter 1. It says here, Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And hath put all things under his feet, and given him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all and all. Okay, so the fullness of him that filleth all and all is a reference to the church, to the Lord Jesus Christ and the church being one. All right, it's not a reference to God filling all and all, and, and he's everything in the whole universe and pantheism. And no, 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 no. It's a reference to the relationship of saved Christians to the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, show you another one here. Uh, over in, it kind of ties into this, Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. I'll start at verse 14, because if you have a new version, it's not going to be there. At least part of the verse isn't going to be there. It says, In whom we have redemption through His blood. The new versions take that out. Even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Okay, Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. You say, what does God look like? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, okay, the, the Godhead works this way. Okay, you say, how is it possible to be three in one? Well, very simple. You have a body, you have a soul, you have a spirit. And these three are one. You see, it works the same way. Man is made in the image of God. So man has a body, we have a soul, we have a spirit. Okay, so when you are lost, your body of flesh is pretty much in charge. Not pretty much in charge, it is in charge. The soul is inside the body. It's not your mind, it's not your intellect. The soul is different than that. The soul is inside the body. Okay, that's the part of you that will live forever. If you are alive on earth today, you will live forever someplace in eternity, either in hell or in heaven. That's the way it works. The spirit, when you are dead, according to Ephesians chapter 1, the spirit is dead in trespasses and sins. Okay, it's kind of like a remote control that doesn't have any batteries in it. Okay, the battery is like the, the you know, it has batteries, but they're dead. I should say it that way. When you get saved, those batteries are made alive. They're quickened. Now, all of a sudden, those things that you couldn't understand as a lost person, you can understand them now because you have the Holy Spirit within you. That's how that works. But if you want to see what the invisible God, because he, he's the soul, that's why you can't see him, uh, the invisible God is inside of the body of Jesus Christ. In him, it says there, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Okay, look at verse 16 here. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Okay, so Jesus Christ is God. 
That's very clear from Scripture. And I did a whole video debunking this satanic heretic, Martin Richling, because Martin Richling, oh, he's a great preacher. You know, he's the one that, uh, you know, I had somebody write to me recently that was part of Richling's cult. And he said that uh, uh, one of them, there was a couple actually that wrote to me, but one of them said that Martin Richling has been teaching that there are really truly only 60 people that are saved on earth. And of course, he's the head of the whole thing. So the guy's nuts. But he was going around saying that Jesus Christ is a created being. Uh, no, Jesus Christ is not a created being. Okay, uh, Jesus Christ is before all things. He is God. All right, so very, very, very wicked. He's not confused. Richling is not confused. He's a Satanist. He's a, I don't even know what part of organization he's part of, but he's nuts. But to say that God is the universe um, because of verses like this, no, no. Uh, God is separate from the universe. He created the universe. Um, and, of course, you know, you start getting into the mystery of, of the, the Godhead, uh, the mystery of godliness is great, the Bible says. Um, there's a lot of things that you can have questions, you know, thrown at you, and what about this and what about that. We're not supposed to understand God with our finite little minds down here. Okay, we're not supposed to just be able to say, oh, well, yeah, let me show you exactly how God works. Uh, he wouldn't be much of a God. He wouldn't really be worthy of our worship if we could just explain Him in five seconds or less. You know, I mean, all of these things that have come out, it's uh, all what about this and what about that and everything else. Um, just remember who it was that asked the first question in the Bible. Uh, the being that said, uh, Yea, hath God said, back in the book of Genesis. And then you'll understand why people ask all these questions. Who is really behind them asking all these questions. You know, you say, what's the truth then? Well, the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So, don't let people pull you away from the Bible. From just, I mean, just read it. Believe it. I mean, it's not that difficult to understand. You know, I mean, it's just crazy, all these, all this stuff. And, you know, and I know the reason a lot of people are asking these questions is because they're getting these questions from the unbelieving world, you know, and they're, and they're getting these attacks. So uh, don't let anybody take your faith in the King James Bible away from you. Uh, stay true to God's Word.